Get your indie fix at sorgatronmedia.com slash store. Get 40% off any digital download with the coupon code Bikini Contest, including our latest release, RWA Fury 5, featuring Jesse Bell Smothers, Serafini, and more. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 12, coming at you from the Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. I am Sorgatron, at Sorgatron's on Twitter. I'm the video guy of the bunch. With me is the talkie guy of the bunch. That's Eamon at Eamon 2 please down there in San Antonio, Texas. Of course, yes, with the great Inspire Pro Wrestling. How you doing, sir? I am doing great tonight, Sorgatron, and I'm ready to talk some wrestling. Awesome. Like we always do. Talking, for 12, at least for 12 weeks. At least for 12 weeks, we've been very successful. I, of course, this is the show where we talk indie wrestling, both of us uh, apart in some small way with indie wrestling in our uh uh you know respective areas here of course you know you announcing amen announcing with the uh inspire pro wrestling organization uh myself doing video up here with the sorgatron media doing for uh renegade pro uh, sorry renegade wrestling alliance uh international wrestling cartel here in western pa and, and other projects as well as they come in uh wrestling non-wrestling a lot of stuff going on so uh with that uh, we we this it's your week for the guests, sir. Somebody from your neck of the woods, somebody we're very familiar with on the Wrestling Mayhem show in the past. Uh, yes, and indeed. And we brought him back for this new show. So so tell us who we're talking to this week. We did, and it's about uh, I want to say to the month, like about two years since we last talked to him. Nice. Uh, and a lot of stuff's changed, and a lot of stuff's grown. And uh, I am proud to now call uh, him my boss, uh, pretty much. Uh, joining us this week is one of the uh, co-owners of Inspire Pro Wrestling, uh, Justin Bissett, a.k.a. Biss. Biss, how's it going? Not bad. Not bad at all, guys. Thanks for having me back on. No problem. Uh, I guess, and I we sort of touched on it when we had you on two years ago, but for those that uh, haven't listened to that yet, which if you haven't, definitely go back to uh, that episode. But um, we definitely want to start things off usually with all our guests about their um, – their earliest professional wrestling memory, uh, what they first remember watching. So, um, uh, what would what were you what what would that be for you? Man, I I just recently realized that I can go back and watch it again. But I think it's a it's a SummerSlam '91, the Macho Man wedding. Um, oh, nice! Of course, with the WWE Network and whatnot. So, I I think that is the first uh, pay per view that I can vividly remember. So. Very cool, and that's a good way to that's a good way to get into it. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, so we last talked to you two years ago, and at that time you were uh, working uh, for Anarchy Championship Wrestling, which you've been working for for a couple of years, uh, or I should say more than a couple of years. Um, but now uh, a lot of stuff has changed, and now you are running your own wrestling promotion, uh, co-running uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling out of Austin, Texas. Um, how overall? I mean, uh, you know, we're about half a year in, uh, about. Uh, hopefully six shows in coming up uh, with our show in April. Uh, how do you feel everything's uh, sort of went so far? Man, it uh, it has gone much better than I anticipated. It, uh, it's been a wild ride. Uh, I was with Anarchy for seven years, I believe. Um, I think it was it was like six and a half, something like that, six and a couple months and change. Um, so, yeah, this project has has blown up uh, much faster than I, I anticipated when uh, I was first approached about it. Um, but it can start off with us just looking at doing something local, um, and almost from day one, it's become much bigger than that. So uh, I am blown away by how far we have come in such a short period of time. Definitely. I, I, I would agree with that completely. Um, and you mentioned how, how happy you have of, of, of how the turnout's been. Uh, would you say you had any specific worries uh, going in and sort of starting your own promotion since this, since this is your sort of first uh, undertaking in, this, uh, in, in that sort of uh, realm? 
Oh yeah. The number one worry was that no one was going to come through the door, man. Um, <laughs> you know, and I, I think I still kind of have that, that weird butterfly in my, my stomach that, you know, um, no one's going to show up to see it, but, um, the crowds have been awesome. We, you know, as you know, we've had standing room only sellouts the last two shows in a row, mm-hmm. um, which, you know, that's, that's not the norm. Um, as a lot of people that fall into wrestling know, uh, you know, you usually don't get those type of crowds, especially six shows in. Uh, we've been very blessed that, you know, people have shown up uh, from the start. So, uh, but that, that's that's the number one fear. Um, number one, that, you know, people wouldn't show up. And number two, that if it, when they did show up, they wouldn't enjoy what we put on. But uh, both of those, fortunately, so far, we haven't had to deal with. So. Mm-hmm. And, and I think... He- in a sense of, I, I, by working through Inspire, I've gained a newfound respect for, I think, you and also Max and Josh and, and all the uh, creative backing teams because it's really, I mean, this is your guys' product and you're putting it out there in a sense to uh, to uh, be loved or hated or critiqued or whatever. And uh, do, you, do you ever find that, I guess, sort of taxing the idea that, you know, this is, you know, your baby in a sense and, and, and you're letting, you know, letting it out to the world? Yeah, it, there, there's a little bit of it, but at the same time, it's also very relieving to uh, to be able to say, hey, this is what we think wrestling should be, and, you know, people are enjoying it. People are showing up to see it. So mm-hmm. uh, we all are, we're three very opinionated people, even though we show it in different ways. So, um, and, and we're, we're very confident in what we believe wrestling should be. So there, there's... There is in the back of our mind that that stress, but at the same time, uh, we believe strongly in what we're doing. So, you know, definitely, yeah. Um, and I guess sort of a, a general statement: if you if you would met, uh, tell anyone who hasn't heard of Inspire Pro Wrestling uh, before, what what's I guess the best way to describe it? What do you think uh, is the thing that Inspire Pro is doing that that people really need to check out? It's, it's a lot of attention to detail. We're trying to uh, not leave any uh, stone unturned. Um, mm-hmm. Creatively, we're trying to present a product that's presented in a new way. It's uh, it's more of a cinematic um, approach to wrestling. And at the same time, we, we hope that people recognize that show to show, uh, things flow and, and things tend to develop more like you might see a, uh, a 13 episode. Um, TV series more than you would on a normal wrestling show. Uh, and at the mm. same time, we're trying to put on the best quality that, that we can for our location. So. Definitely. And I can definitely tell that I think the key, the key thing that we have right now is definitely in our storytelling aspect. Um, all I think all our crew is really putting a lot of effort into developing those stories and getting people hooked and interested and, and, and I'd like to think that's hopefully what uh, we're all doing. Yeah, and and that was that was part of the goal from the start too. As as far as the crew, we uh, we kind of thought outside of the box so as far as where we went to find people for roles. Um, yourself on commentary, uh, Brendan Trout as the ring announcer, uh, even you know Max, uh, mm-hmm. as far as helping us out with creative. We really didn't want to get stuck in the the normal roles of, of wrestling people in a wrestling company. We kind of reached outside of that so that there was that that excitement and that um, that real passion behind the product. Um, and I think that's helped us out a lot as well. Definitely. I agree. Um, and now this is your first time uh, promoting, I guess, necessarily a show. I know you had a lot of backstage play with Anarchy Championship Wrestling and also with the NWA uh, for a brief period of time. Um, but, you know, with your now this being your show sort of and, and promoting and um, what what is some of the stuff you've learned from a, I guess, a promoter aspect or also and, and maybe what do what would you say for those that looking to maybe be a promoter? What are some of like the basic like rules or, or sort of techniques you would you know you would uh, give to them but you will never be prepared for it like no matter mm. how much you think you are you will never be fully prepared for everything that's going to come at you um i i've found myself um in much more of a just managing people role um 
it's I, you know I, I have Max there to do the creative, um, and it's a lot more of just organizing the, uh, everybody, you know, the talent, um, the staff, and then creative and making it all work together. Much more than I ever thought it would would be. I thought, okay, one day I'll run my own company and you know I'll write all the stories and um, I'll hire everybody. And it, it doesn't really work out that way. You kind of have to move and shake with everybody and, and make everything go together. Um, and so I find myself kind of directing the vision and letting everyone else kind of excel at what they do, which is not what I anticipated doing, um, but it, it works out a lot better that way, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and definitely from, from that aspect, but I've all, I mean, you know, working with you and, 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 you know, getting to see like how the show sort of all comes together, like that whole idea of like working on the fly and, and, and the fact that, you know, things change and things always have to be adjusted. Like, like I think that rings very true. Like I, not, not the idea that nothing is ever, you know, exactly how you envisioned it from the very beginning, even from like a, a show by show perspective. Oh, uh, definitely. And I mean, that's part of the fun of, of wrestling is, is well sometimes it's fun and sometimes it's you know it's a nightmare but uh <laughs> rolling with the punches and the, the weird things that are going to come up and just how are you going to deal with them um if you don't have fun doing that you're not going to last long so right definitely um and you I, um currently obviously i'm doing commentary for inspire pro i mentioned a couple of times on this podcast but uh I, you did commentary for so long uh back when you were a part of acw and it was actually i was actually really excited back at our XTC of gold event you actually joined me for a couple matches uh which which was really cool i thought I, you know, it was a great learning experience and great to sort of sort of see it from that perspective you know listening to you on all the dvds and stuff like that and now like actually being behind the table with you and i know i was talking to you like sort of after the event about, and you were mentioning how sort of weird it was to sort of be back on commentary. Uh, uh, was, was that a sort of an interesting experience for you? Yeah, it was, um, um the first couple of matches, I, I felt bad. I felt like I was, I was kind of rusty and, uh, holding you back a little bit, but, oh, uh, come on. you know, it's, I guess it's kind of like riding a bike, um, you know, a few to get the knock the rust off and, and I was back in it with, uh, it was a lot of fun to work with you too and see, see how far you've come. And, uh, you know, um, kind of be more in the, the color role than the play by play. And, uh, I definitely enjoyed that. So hopefully I can, I can jump back on commentary from, from time to time. Definitely. If, and if Gary J ever does come back, I have no problem switching that chair and, and, and giving you that <laughs> shot again. Oh man. Yeah. So. But yeah. Um, we also, I mean, uh, you're actually our uh, only promoter that we've had on the show. Our first ever episode, we actually had do- uh, Joe Dombrowski, who's done promoting for Prime Wrestling and other stuff. And he met, and we discussed a lot of the aspects of the um, re- uh, the rewarding stuff that he gave from it, but also like the really challenging and, and sort of taxing stuff that uh, occurred when he was uh, running the promotion. Uh, if you and we sort of bring up the idea of. of a question we've been commonly asking all the wrestlers that we have on is, is what's the best thing about indie wrestling and what's the worst thing about indie wrestling. And, and I think uh, I would, I definitely want to uh, hear your take on that as well, but also in turn, maybe what, what do you think has been the most rewarding thing you've gotten from running inspire and also the most challenging? Uh, the, the most rewarding is, is seeing people um, achieve their goals, seeing, you know, the people that you bring in, um, and put in a spot and then they shine in that spot. Um, that's, that's always been the most rewarding, but now it's, it's a different level of rewarding because, you know, those are, those are my people now, you know, and they're my people succeeding. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, most challenging is, um, sometimes when, when, you know, people, um, people make decisions that, that challenge you and, um, you know, they're not part of the show anymore and, and they, they make that and it's, it's somebody that you have a personal relationship with and you know for a business decision they they're not going to be part of the show anymore um that's still very challenging for me because uh i do invest a lot of of myself in and other people succeeding so um mm-hmm. when someone's not going to be a part of the show anymore uh that's definitely the part that uh is the most challenging for me at least 
there, yeah, I definitely, definitely see that. Um, but also, I, I guess sort of the common question we do ask on this show to all the indie wrestlers, and uh, and obviously you have a very different perspective uh, of it. But uh, what do you think currently overall is the best thing about independent wrestling right now, and in turn the worst thing? Uh, the best thing is just um, the creativity that, that's available out there. Uh, mm-hmm. for wrestlers to express um you know for for me like one of the coolest things uh, that's happened on the indies recently was the uh the steam and generica feud um and i know mm-hmm. that's kind of baiting me out there a little bit because uh, that's <laughs> not exactly current but um just to, the, the freedom that they had to, to take that feud and you know ring of honor pwg wherever they went they were able to take it and just make it so much bigger than just um, two guys that, you know, that didn't like each other. Um, it just mm-hmm. it became this bigger thing. And, you know, right now on, on, you know, WWE TV, you can't really do that because it's, it's so self-contained. Um, right. As far as, as negatives, um, you know, you, you right now, it, it feels like we're kind of going through a period Uh, a lot of those guys that were indie darlings have been snatched up. So the indies are kind of having to rebuild themselves right now. And uh, I think that's kind of a negative thing. Mm -hmm. And, and and you, you hope in that sense when they do have to rebuild and they have to adjust um, that, you know, people come up and people emerge from, you know, from whether it be opportunity or whether, you know, be whatever. But uh, I, I hope to say that uh, some guys have, uh, I think a lot of guys have definitely done that. And then a lot of guys that were on that point of, you know, even reaching that level already get snatched up by WWE too. Like I, I'm think of a guy like, you know, a Sammy Callahan or, or Samurai Del Sol guys that were sort of really developing and doing different stuff and, and breaking out. And now they're already gone. Like it's, it's, it's yeah. a, very interesting process. Yeah, and and I I wonder how much of that's going to increase with the the WWE network and NXT uh, almost being a a broadcast indie right now. You know, mm-hmm. um, how many of those guys are going to get snatched up to fill fill that content? Um, but at the same time, you know, that that's when something fresh, something new comes along. Um, so. A guy like ACH needs needs to break out. This is going to be very Texas influence, but a guy like Ray Rowe needs to break out. You know, these young and upcoming coming guys, um, a Sammy Guevara needs to break out. You know, mm-hmm. um, and then there, who's the ACH and the the Ray Rowe and the Sammy Guevara of you know Pittsburgh of Florida of all these you know um, areas. Um, and what what do they need to do to break out and become that next big name that, that we're all uh, we all want to see get picked up, you know? Right. Yeah, definitely. And and that's it's a situation where you can only hope. Um, but yeah, definitely. Uh, and now it's not too long. We still got a, a bit of a month away, but uh, our, we do have an upcoming show for Inspire Pro on April twenty seventh. I'm very excited about I, I mentioned this when promoting it uh, on this show and also on social media and that this I, I personally think this is one of the more brave cards that we've actually put out yeah this uh, this card is after my own heart um, this is, is a lot more um, very close to, to my style there's a lot of, of Japanese influence um, on this card so I am really excited about this card, and uh, I hope fans are as excited as I am. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it, it should be very interesting. We're seeing a lot of of, of intriguing uh, breakout perf- – uh, hope uh, which should be, I think, some good breakout performances, even – uh, I mean, we've had guys like you know Sammy Guevara that have started to you know you know after wrestling ACH really I think sort of had a proving point for himself. Even guys like Ray Rowe after wrestling Chris Hero, um, and I think there's um, opportunity definitely here uh, in, for example, someone like Andy Dalton wrestling uh, Takaaki Watanabe from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, there's even even the sense of a uh, Jake Durden who's been you know in pro wrestling Noah and and has traveled all across that area wrestling someone like James Claxton. I think that's a big opportunity for James. Um, so there's, I think 
I think this card has a lot of opportunities for, to uh, to showcase some new people and, and to sort of, like you mentioned in that whole like revolving of indie wrestlers, to get maybe the next guy in Texas. Yeah, and you know Andy Dalton's been a guy that's that's been around since I started, um, and even a little bit before that. Um, and he's always been put in a, a very specific finite role. Um, this is going to give him a chance to to get out of that role a little bit and to take on a, a different role. So mm-hmm. um, that's very exciting for me. Um, and then just wor- working with the New Japan talent and working with Juan and Robbie uh, is exciting to, to grow that relationship um, as well as some others. Uh, Jake Durden's a guy that, I mean, uh, ACH actually um, introduced me to his work, and I see a lot of Bruiser Brody in the guy, and uh, mm. you know that that really excites me. Um, and that that's that's strange flip over just to, to kind of brush over, but uh, if you look at the guy and you look at his work, I think a lot of people will be able to see that. Um, so yeah, and and bringing in Lance Hoyt, who um, mm. has been a guy that I I have a ton of respect for, and uh, finally. You know, there's been some chances to work in the past together with with Lance, and it just hasn't come together. And finally, to have the right situation is uh, really cool too. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm very excited to work with Lance from the fact that you know, looking at it from perspective, like that guy's pretty much done everything, like WWE, TNA, you know, Japan, pretty much everything. So I, I that's definitely going to be a great addition to uh to the show, and and hopefully uh, something further. I, I like this because yeah, it, it, it sounds like you guys had had your had a, a nice round of like throwing some names on there that people know, like your ACHs and your Chuck Taylors and your uh, Chris Heroes. And now it sounds like you get it sounds like you guys get to do kind of your dream card at this point, right? Yeah, it, it's it's really cool. We've um, I, I feel like the first few shows it was very important to to bring in a guy like Chris Hero fresh off of. Uh, you know, his NXT run, uh, to bring in Chuck Taylor to, to get that attention on the local guys. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. ACW's done a wonderful job of, of bringing attention to, to a lot of these guys. But, uh, mm. you know, it gave us, us a chance to get the attention as Inspire. And uh, now we're kind of at the point where, you know, those guys have, have gotten the exposure and this card really lets them kind of run. And, uh, that doesn't mean that we're not going to bring in the national talent anymore, but mm-hmm. this card in particular is, is their chance to shine. You know, Thanks. I, I, I think it helped greatly. I think, um, though I've talked to this to a couple people, um, within the company and, and the idea that, you know, the ecstasy of gold show was pretty much the biggest crowd we've gotten. Uh, and with having Chris hero and Takaki Watanabe, I think that helped a lot. Um, and I think we maintained that at the uh, the following show, like the Fuse, with a lot of our guys and with our stories, and 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 based off of our product because they saw what we were able to uh, provide beforehand. And and I think the crowd was just as hot, just as into it. So I think that really helped us. Um, and and hopefully we can you know continue that momentum. But yeah, uh, that's the next Inspire Pro uh, Wrestling event coming up that you can mm-hmm. buy tickets for inspireprowrestling dot com because I'm sure that would make me happy and that would make this happy. Um, that so, would make me very happy. <laughs> yeah. Check out the uh, website. <laughs> Spread the happiest, the happiness. Hey, I guess I want to ask you. Like, I, I I've been. Uh, Thoroughly impressed. I've mentioned several times on the show with the presentation you guys have down there uh, between the website, between what I'm seeing, you know, as somebody that's not in your area, I think it's very important uh, to to have that, you know, not just your Texas local and actually make a buzz, you know, kind of nationwide as much as you can. I mean, that's, you know, what we talk about here on the show. Um, uh, you know, how important is that presentation? It's really interesting that you you do have your full, your full shows up, so people can see exactly what they're getting uh, with an Inspire Pro show. And we, we us up here in Pittsburgh can go check it out. For instance, uh, can you talk a little bit about your philosophy about that presentation outside of the actual there at the show day of? Oh, that, that's huge for us. Um, you know, Beyond Wrestling was kind of an influence there for us. Um, mm-hmm. We uh, we feel that before we, you know, try to sell a DVD or, or sell an iPay-per-view, uh, fans need to know what they're getting out of us. And we know we're the new kid on the block. So until we get all our ducks in a row production-wise and, and 
at this point, I'm very happy with the production. Um, but the first couple of shows, you know, there were some hiccups and, you know, at the same time, we wanted to show people, Hey, this is what we are. And we're going to stand by our, uh, our product, you know, we're going to live and die by it. So this is what we are. And, you know, hopefully there, there comes a day where we can, you know, put on a show that's an iPad view. Uh, but by the time we get to that point, we want people to know, you know, this is what we can expect. This is the level of quality we can expect from Inspire Pro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you definitely, you definitely see that paying off. It looks like as far as the crowds and everything, uh, it sounds like everything's going really awesome down there. Because I mean, I know you talked about the numbers and how you guys are blessed about having standing room only crowds like that. I know, I know, you know, Cubby's been around 10, 12 years not getting crowds like that, or or just getting the crowds like that now after five. Uh, and it's it's pretty tremendous to even see that happening, you know, at this point, especially as crowded as here in the Pittsburgh area. Um, so so really cool to see. And I know I hear from Eamon all the time what you guys are doing and the exciting things coming down the pike and everything uh, as they're coming. And, and it's really, really cool to watch you guys grow, uh, even from afar up here. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, I've... Uh... I kind of feel bad for, for some of these guys. And, uh, but I don't know if I feel bad, but, you know, being around indie wrestling, it's, those crowds don't always come in that easy. It, it takes mm -hmm. a lot of hard work, and we've been very fortunate. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, hopefully hopefully they don't take it for granted because, you know, there's there's guys doing good stuff that, that aren't getting those sellout crowds. So, um, you know, we've been very fortunate to, to be lucky for everything to line up for us. Awesome. 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 Uh, well, definitely, uh, like I mentioned, go check out Inspire Pro. Also go check out Biss. Uh, if I believe they can follow you on Twitter at Biss says, uh, when you up, you do update occasionally, I, I, I encourage Biss <laughs> to update more, but I, I, maybe we'll get yeah, to that. My, my more yeah, getting guy. My marketing guy's on me about that, so. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sell yourself. But, yeah, um, if you want to join us, Biz, for the rest of the conversation, we're going to talk a little bit of uh, indie wrestling stuff that's happening. Uh, speaking of stuff that's happening and that happened, Sorg, I know you had some stuff this Ooh, past weekend that I you did. were a part of. Yes, indeed. Uh, the uh, IWC, well, we had a double shot, actually. Uh, once again, uh, <laughs> seems like minutes down the road, these guys are running from each other. It makes it a little easier for me to run two crews. Of course, RWA had their great uh, show, uh, March to Victory, I believe was the name of it this month, but I'll be editing that hopefully next week and have some more to say about it then. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I was there in White Oak, PA for IWC's Uncivil War. Um, kind of interesting, they're departing even more, it seems, this year from their usual Court Time Sports Center, which is, I mean, you've seen that aiming on tape. I mean, it's a nice big place. They have, like, uh, good lights, like boxing ring lights over the the ring mm. and they black out the rest of it. so it doesn't look like a basketball court you know and we get to put up a big screen and it's a nice presentation uh so uh, you know kind of cool to get some other areas you know hopefully get some different fans in a different feel for shows um you know definitely a smaller show that they do uh but we still had some pretty cool surprises uh one uh this 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 theory that, go, that goes around like it seems like zima ion shima zion uh from here locally seems every time he goes to the country he brings some back uh, in this case, we had we had some random Russians. I'm sorry, I don't know their names. Uh, I know one of them is actually going to be included on uh, the Night of the Superstars three show, uh, and he has a belt of some sort. Uh, but they got th they got thrown in with you know friend of a show actually. Uh, there was you know, friends of the show, uh, for the STDs chess flexor who was on the show with Brian McDowell uh, against uh, uh, Jock Sampson in his first uh, match with IWC. Uh, because we know him from this show, we know him from RWA, we know him from the the DBI Invitationals um, over in Ohio. Uh, a lot of fun. He, you know, I was watching uh, some old WWE Network and was watching some Stan Hansen when they were talking about Texas wrestling on the Legends Roundtable. I'm like, that's Jock Sampson. I never watched any of Stan Hansen. I'm like, I understand Jock Sampson now completely. It all makes sense. And it's kind of hard to, right? Because it's Jock Sampson. Um, but uh, a lot of fun match. That nice three way and uh, Jock Sampson doing doing a dive was fun. Um, aside from that, fantastic match with uh, Michael Facade, and, uh, well, I guess he just goes by Facade now, I keep forgetting that, and uh, and Johnny Gargano. 
Now we I, had, there, I, I, the minute I saw that, I was, I was very intrigued by uh, how that match was going to go. Now, now, the two of them were involved in a three-way match back in uh, December. Pretty packed crowd, and, and uh, Cole Command was involved. And I actually had a discussion recently with somebody, and they were like, they weren't very happy because they were like, there wasn't much going on in that match. You know, there wasn't much psychology. And I'm like, yeah, I think, I think it was just the spot they were in, right? Uh, but mm-hmm. this was a chance for you know Johnny coming out because you know uh, those. You know, fans of IWC, Johnny Gargano, who's now Dragon Gate champion for the last, what, two years? A couple of years, yeah. I mean, he is he is pretty much like, you know, one of the guys on the indies right now. Uh, and and they brought he brought up, this is the first time that he's kind of been back to kind of do something significant with IWC. Uh, he went into a whole thing about the first time he was at IWC, he was teamed with, you know, a just pretty much just out of training, Michael, the bomber facade. Um, you know, bomber as in spray paint. Uh, <laughs> and for those that Not don't that know, kind of bomber. we had to have him explain it when he came on the show, what the heck a bomber was. Uh, <laughs> and he still does that. He still does the Ninja Turtle thing and everything. It's pretty great. Uh, kids love him. Uh, but it was, it was a really good match and, and definitely stole the show that night. Um, and we talked about, again, I, I said I didn't want to talk about poop too much on the show. But, oh, boy. <laughs> but but there was an incident where apparently during the main event, which was Dalton Castle and Joseph Brooks, which I was trying to figure out what was wrong because something was off about this match. And and I found out, I started, I, I started getting on the headset. I was like, hey, dude, it smells out here. I was like, what's going on? And I don't know if this guy's in the ring. I don't know if somebody on our ringside as purely speculation, but apparently it cleared one side of the ring of fans. It was so bad out there. Uh, so definitely one of the weirdest things I've seen uh, at an indie show for a good while. Um, that, that's- that's a, that's a challenge, I guess you could say. I guess so. I mean, yeah. Especially that was like the most active side too. So maybe somebody just got a little, little too, too crazy. The action was that. that great. It was yeah, that good. Yeah. So it's so great. They're speculating on the on the Wrestling Mayhem show earlier. It's like apparently the matches were so good, somebody could not leave to go to the bathroom all night, and uh, and that went down. So. Um, but other than that, the other the only other weird thing is, and I don't know how you guys manage to sound and inspire. Not every match needs a promo, you know. Oh, um, yeah. And it felt like, and I'm very surprised, especially with this group. I'm very surprised there were so many people on the mic throughout the night, and it's a group that's usually more action than talk. I, I feel. And, mm. and and then I'm hearing from the guys that usually have like a second segment segment promo every month where they do a show that there was no talking all night. What happened? Really? Like what Twilight Zone thing happened this past Saturday <laughs> in pro wrestling here in the area? Uh, so just... that's interesting because I know IWC normally does like a lot of like backstage interviewing like sort of stuff if I recall. Yeah, but again, at court time where we can do that. Mm-hmm. We don't set up for that at these kinds of shows. They're a little bit more, more limited of the setup because of things. Um, so it was, so everything was in ring and everything went seemed to take too long. And I, uh, I, I don't know. And they have been prone to doing more longer kind of microphone segments. They got Justin Labar and 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 you know from from wrestle zone involved so there has to be a lot of talking you know i mean that's not a slight on the bar or anything like that i think he's doing a fantastic job um mm-hmm. but it feels like that's they've moved into that we need we need that happening and 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 i i think i feel like they've kind of gone a little too far down the talky side um so which makes it a little hard for the flow of the show sometimes so but when they got down to action it was it was, it was very good uh uh for most of the night uh, so, so a uh, really cool show. That'll be all on DVD. It's actually already edited. So, uh, as soon as I get graphics, you'll see it over there. IWCWrestling.com. Cause Sorg is a beast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I'm getting this done. I got a documentary to finish in this next week. Uh, <laughs> that is not easy either, man. I know that. Hey, so. well, well, thankfully we, we live switch them, uh, whenever I'm there at least. Yeah. So, so nice. as long as I didn't screw anything up, uh, <laughs> it's, it's just yeah. stick them in. Clop, clip off the sides. I had to mix the audio a little bit because apparently at intermission, somebody turned the microphone around. And I, it took me a match to figure out what was going on. Um, uh. and, and so I had to do a little bit of mixing and I was like, okay, I think that, I think we got that as much as we can. Um, uh, so, so, you know, without any super, super thing, throw some graphics in, you know, put, put the caps on them. We're good to render that out. And I sent it out to the boys and they let me know if I screwed anything up real bad, you know, uh, that's generally a process. 
So, um, and I like to get it out quick for the guys so they can see their matches and everything. So, um, and then I'm going to edit RWA. Although we are looking at, I actually, I'm starting to scout uh, potentially getting a second person to switch for these double shots or triple shots that might be coming out since they're so much hmm. going on. So, um, I mean, that's such a hard thing to, for me Manage. to, yeah, for, to, to give up control of, I guess. Yeah. To trust somebody else with, with that. You know, um, because I feel like live switching is not something you can just hand off to somebody. Mm. Uh, it, I mean, you have to be on top of things. You have to be paying attention. You have to have a flow, you know, and and I just, you know, it, it just seems like uh, something that, yeah, you just can't toss somebody in. I mean, we've, we've got some people in there that have a little bit of camera experience, have been able to teach them, follow them, we're on headsets and everything. So uh, we're going to start that process to kind of expand a little bit. Uh, so, which is going to be kind of cool. So, and, and Very ho interesting. hopefully be able to take on more wrestling, to be honest. Um, you know, I, I, I know when we started sword, um, we tried to like Frankenstein a group together of guys I used to work with and some guys Brendan Shroud uh, works with. And that, that didn't even work out because mm -hmm. there wasn't just that trust between them. Yeah. Know? And there has to be, um, there, there has to be um, like, I got a guy, I got a guy that I'm, I'm kind of bringing in, like again, that trust level. Like, there's certain people, I'm like, you're good enough for a hard cam. I know that. I know you can deal with this. You'll take directions, or you've at least been doing the hard cam long enough. This is the thing you do. Um, I have a guy that's capable. I send him on shoots all the time. He, I'm just like, hey, can you go to this wedding? I'm busy. You know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but he doesn't know or understand wrestling, so it's hard to be like, yeah, go do the job. You know, um, right. I, I, I'm not putting him ringside because he doesn't know what to look for. You know, versus we'll probably stand in the wrong place and get clobbered, you know, mm -hmm. uh, which is a concern. So it's, yeah, it's very, very difficult to find first the person to put in that spot, you know, and then trust to be able to, you know, if you do have these kind of things, say, okay, I know these guys can go do a show and it'll be cool. You know, it took a lot to get to this point where I can trust, you know, a couple people to go down and do a show without me that I post at it. You know, yeah, because because some stuff has come back to me all screwed up and I'd have to fix it. You know, audio is all screwed up for the night or something. You know, um, it's very, very hard for me to do that kind of stuff and to get that control. Well, we got to if we want to do more. So, right. But, but no, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see how that goes. Uh, I know the next IWC event, I believe, will be Night of the Superstars. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, they, they finally formulated some of the matches here. Um, and this is, I've always liked the old legend shows, um, you know, even going to them before I was filming with these guys and they kind of converted to these. And, and I love that's in the backyard of where I used to live up there, uh, a little North of us. Um, but they got, uh, you know, Bret Hart in the corner of, uh, Davey Boy Smith Jr. Uh, against RJ city with Justin Labar in the corner. That's going to be fun. That should be very interesting. That's going to be fun. Uh, AJ Styles against Anthony Nice, which if you guys have not seen Anthony Nice, who was a former TNA, I keep forgetting, he's a former TNA guy, right? People have seen mm -hmm. him yeah. on a national stage here. And he just does ridiculous stuff as far as as far as far uh, the indies go. Uh, Matt Tavern's actually coming in from the Ring of Honor uh, to take on the champion, Dalton Castle. Um, I actually got to see a little bit of a, it looked like, it looked like a little bit of Dalton Castle doing some amateur wrestling, like legit in the ring before the show. That was pretty cool to see I, I, with, with some of the guys. Um, Steiners are actually going to be in a six man tag against, you know, locally here, the big, big, uh, team, big league and, uh, teaming up with Jimmy nuts who Jimmy nuts is, I think is going to be, that guy's going to be big. He's, he's been, he's showed up on uh, dark matches on ring of honor locally and just had the crowd go abs absolutely insane. For him. Awesome, and then teaming with the Steiner brothers. That's kinda... Yeah, it's teaming with the Steiner brothers, and and I, I think he's also the uh, lucky, lucky for having the name he does because like I, nuts is just a shortening of his name apparently, and having having the crowd go let's go nuts is is <laughs> just very very fortunate. Uh, Pretty good. <laughs> Matt Stryker and Bobby Fish. That could be very fun. Different, definitely a clashing of styles. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think. Uh, and I don't know if you guys realize this watching Ring of Honor, but I know on the indies, he's a talker, man. I don't know how many times he's pretty much out there ringside, running away from the, you know, good guy, and, and pretty much cutting a promo on him and doesn't need a microphone. So, um, Zima Ion's going to be on there against Facade. And this is one of the Russians, actually. Uh, Il Ilya Malkin? 
you're the international guy, Eamon. Maybe you'll tell me about something. Oh, I guy. don't. I you have no I, idea. No, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't help you there. Sorry. But I mean, uh, go ahead. He's a Malkin in Pittsburgh. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> everybody's like wait is he a penguin what's going on here is he is, is it his brother you know um it might be it might be part of the, the last contract or something <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh dennis gregory is uh, i'm sorry yeah De- uh, gregory irons i'm sorry is going to be a part of this a bunch of other guys um asylum has been really impressing me uh so it's going to be a blast they got meet and greets and everything so it's going to be it's going to be great to go up there and hang out and uh be able to do that show um and then the week after you know, mention we'll get more information on this as we go here uh rw is doing a big show they're actually taking on the the california university a pa uh convocation center uh and doing a big salute to the troops uh uh thing and this is like a pretty i mean i guess i guess the arena holds like six thousand people um i don't think that they're going to fill six thousand people but i think they'll be able to get a significant number um, just because it is like a troops thing and everything, I think it's going to be a lot of fun as far as that goes. So, really cool to see them doing uh, something outside of the box of just running a gymnasium every month. You know, yeah. which I think they've I think been doing, a unique concept, which they've been doing this. very good at, and they have been uh, again, like you guys, they're standing room only, I, and 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 to the point where I know I've been like, how long can they stuff people into that place? <laughs> you know, because uh, Eamon, I, you've seen the footage. You know, I've complained about like looking at the ceiling with when we do shots on the guys on the on the uh, uh, turnbuckles and just seeing right. that hideous ceiling that looks like it's going to fall down. Every month. <laughs> uh, so I mean, it's good. St- a dirty basketball hoop in the background during everything, and it's just it just drives me insane. And I, I feel like their product has gotten a lot better over the last couple of years, since especially since I was going to say since I started working with them. But that's not me that's doing it. It's, it's actually what they're doing in the ring is getting a lot better. So, and mm-hmm. the guys are bringing. We, it. we know it's you, Sorg. We know it's you. <laughs> you, you, you me? You're the. I am. I'm hard, I hardly show up with them anymore, so it's not my influence. <laughs> that's for damn sure. Uh, so, um, but but no, good to see that. Good to see a, a lot of people doing a lot of cool new things, a lot of bigger things uh, like this in the area here. Um, so, good stuff. Good stuff. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, well, definitely go to, go check it out. Go support IWC, RWA. Go support Circuitron Media and buy some DVDs because that will be uh, that will definitely be a treat. Uh, there are a couple indie wrestling shows that are happening this weekend that I do want to uh, bring up and promote. Uh, that are some a lot of big stuff happening this weekend. I think last weekend we had a bit of a light week, but now things are starting to pick up. Uh, the first uh, being for. Uh, what could I think uh, likely be contested is one of the top indies in the United States. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, 2013, had, they had an amazing year, but uh, uh, PWG Pro S and Gorilla uh, is doing their Mystery Vortex 2 event uh, Friday, March 28th uh, in Reseda, California, which should be very fun. Uh, the entire lineup, it's a mystery because it's oh, Mystery Vortex. <laughs> um, so, I, but I mean, PWG brings stellar talent uh cons- consistently um so i think you're guaranteed to have a great show um so i definitely encourage you to go check that out if you want information on tickets you can go to pro wrestling gorilla.com also this weekend if you're not in the california area but you are uh around the uh, uh midwest uh, illinois area uh aaw is having an event this weekend that should be very fun i really uh i have a couple dvds of theirs and they and they put out some really great work bringing some great guys uh their take no prisoners event uh which will feature a, a title match between shane hollister and michael elgin who is a uh, obviously ring of honor star uh rhino will be there uh guys like uh ach kyle o'reilly um, tons of really good guys uh, that are, are that are making waves in the independent wrestling world, and uh, they put out some really good stuff. So I encourage you to go to aawrestling.com if you are anywhere near Illinois and want to uh, check out uh, some professional wrestling. Uh, go support them. And I know Sor, uh, there I knew there you mentioned that there was an upcoming event possibly for uh, KSWA. Uh, yeah, this weekend it's it's local here in Pittsburgh. They don't do DVDs or anything, but they're supposed to be a very fun show. Keystone Wrestling Association, uh, I believe. I don't know if it's run by Lord Zoltan, but you know he's very much involved in it. Keith Hot actually, we, that's the one we talked about where he was the jester character and everything. Uh, it's one of their bigger shows. They get pretty hot crowds. So if you're in Pittsburgh, go check that out. But of course, anybody else, you're probably not going to care. Um, also, I put one in the doc because I heard rumblings about somebody that got booked, and I could 
couldn't remember it. But surprise, there's actually a show this weekend up in Cleveland. Um, oh, yes, yes. Uh, for AIW Absolute Intense Wrestling, AIWrestling.com, Girls Night Out, and it's a uh, very It's much... actually a two-night event, or, or there, excuse me, there, there's one night, but they're doing two tapings. Oh, I see. Um, for uh, Girls Night Out, uh, which should be very, uh, very good. They're bringing in a lot of great talent, I think, for those shows. Uh, a lot of international talent as well, which is very mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a, a lot of them I'm familiar with. Thunder Kitty I saw at Pro Wrestling Day, Marty Bell I've seen around, Mia Yim. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Athena, who's definitely a Texas uh, bred name and nice. is making a return from injury. So I know I've seen Angel and Dust before. Sassy stuff. He's been around the area. Um, Mickey Knuckles, I, who I think was she was on TNA for a minute, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. Uh, Beta Scott. A uh, so a lot of fun stuff there. Alyssa, K, uh, Allison K. Sorry. Uh, so uh, they always they always have a great. Great lineups uh, with the AI wrestling shows. I'm trying to remember somebody ridiculous got, just got booked for the JT Lightning Invitational, and I can't. Uh, one uh, WCW star, Buff Bagwell. Thank you, thank who's you. Been making Which, his rounds. Holy in a crap! Field. Art of wrestling. He shot his freaking dad, and he's halfway <laughs> through the story, and that's when the podcast screws up because I don't know. Cole Cabana, pick your pot, pick. Fix your podcast that I go half an hour in. He's broken. I just broke Eamon. Uh, you, you okay over there? I, I, so, Sorg brought this up last night. And so, he just he, yelled and he at the shot, his dad. Like, shot his dad. Like when he was a teenager. And and uh, Buff. Holy that's, crap. Buff, that's not the stuff. Buff, I didn't know what kind of stuff was Buff. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> um, and, of course, also he's making the rounds on I think this is where you were going. He's making the rounds as as being on. Um, uh, oh crap! Is it a Gigolo show or something? Sort of. I I, I don't have the, uh, yeah. the specifics. But uh, what? Well, yeah, it's not on your DVR. No, it's not. No, are you sure? So if you want to book Buff Bagwell for uh, your independent wrestling show or for other things or for the ladies. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When we when we get buffed down and inspired, best. There you go. Indie Riffic, my friend. Only <laughs> <laughs> uh, But no, it was a tremendous I, interview. It was until it broke. So, yeah. <laughs> God. This isn't the first time. I listened like half an hour of the show and then it starts over. Like it's a file and like it's like they copy and pasted part of it over itself or something and then you have to find your spot again. Maybe it's just Stitcher. I don't know. A little bit of a technical issue I'm having lately. So. Yeah, well, if there's a podcast about wrestling, there's, you know, there's a certain one that I think maybe people should listen to. <laughs> I did screw up. A, I did screw up like but, two weeks ago, the render. So, uh, I mean, oh, I've no, done no, it before. No, I'm sorry, I'm not shooting on you. I've done it before. I've done, I mean, you know, this happens. <laughs> this happens. I'm not, I'm not even sure if people are listening to this show. I don't even know if it gets out. I have no idea. I, no idea. I'm sure there's people out there. <laughs> But uh, this, I guess the last thing we can talk about is the thing that we do every week here on the Indie Mayhem Show, and that is our uh, challenge for this week, uh, where we pick an independent wrestler. We compose a playlist that you can find on YouTube.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show of matches and segments and, and all, all, all the stuff you can find. Uh, and basically, you watch it and tell us what you think. This week is a guy that uh, I know very well. I know Biss knows, obviously, uh, from his work in Inspire. Uh, but also, I know, Sora, you've seen him once before. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is one Sammy Guevara. In the same building uh, that I was just at. <laughs> actually, yeah. that's what this match with facade that he has is actually from that same building that we were just at this weekend. Um, the, 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 now the house of the mystery smell, according to uh, me. So, uh, but no, no, the great match he had with facade, um, uh, Sammy and facade there, uh, tremendous. He impressed me. He definitely impressed me. Um, I, I know the biggest complaint I heard, you know, around was great in the ring, but needs to work on his personality. And I know you guys see a lot more of him. Uh, down in your area, I mean, how how has he been coming in the uh, what am I at a year later uh, since I've seen him? Dude, this is this is a really weird story. Um, coming up, uh, Amanda Fox, who who should have been like the next great women's talent, but it just didn't work out. Um, Sammy Guevara was actually training with her uh, at Booker T School when she first broke in. So I've known Sammy since before he even broke in. Um, so. 
so like from there to now is a crazy progression, but just over the last two years, he's, he's really progressed. Nice. So, nice. I, I agree. Completely. I know, I know river city wrestling just put on him and Masada from CZW. And I think that's on their TV show, which is on like a, a local Spanish channel. So I'm hoping that makes it on the YouTube so that more people can see that too. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, definitely a great match. Uh, I definitely encourage people to seek that out. And I, and from the time I believe I I saw him around a year ago for the first time, and even in that time, like how I think he's refined his wrestling. Um, I think he can be. He's a guy that I think a lot of people can easily label as just like a spotty guy. Mm-hmm. But I think people. I think he's grown a lot. Uh, in in River City, he had a long feud with. Uh, Matthew Palmer, who we had an indie challenge of a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I think the time that he's spent sort of with Palmer uh, wrestling him taught him a lot. Um, and I think he's really endeared himself. And I think he's he's done amazing work uh, and, and has the – I mean, he's not just, you know – I mean, he's wrestled in Texas, obviously. He's been to Pittsburgh, that's where I've seen him. He's also been in uh, countless tours in Mexico, uh, been to Germany, uh, and very, still very young, uh, and has all the potential in the world, I think. Um, so I definitely encourage anyone to keep an eye out for Sammy Guevara, because uh, you never know. I think that he can really be something. Nice. Yeah, keep an eye out for him. Ooh. Nice. And there's definitely uh, there's a uh, there should be a match out uh, hopefully soon at the next Inspire Pro event that you can find on YouTube uh, mm-hmm. with him versus ACH, which nice. is a match you should definitely seek out. I'll, I'll because... certainly be looking forward to that one. But yeah, that was the indie challenge for this past week. Uh, this next week's indie challenge, uh, with the playlist already on youtubecom slash show is uh, a little bit more of a challenge for me because I don't get to see this guy uh, every month. But I know Sorg does, uh, mm-hmm. and that is a guy that we mentioned already before. But that is Facade, uh, resident of the Pittsburgh, Ohio area. Uh, really is a uh, has a unique look. Uh, I remember the first – I think the first time I ever saw Facade wrestle was at that uh, Resolution event that me and Sorg went to at the Nautica in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they did a – I remember seeing an autograph session that they were doing, and he had a longer, a much longer line than Kevin Nash, of all people, which surprised me. Because <laughs> I think he's just got a real – he's got a real marketable look, Dude, and, and the you know, and kids love is. him. Go, go ahead. ahead go ahead. I am just blown away at the market marketability he has done for himself. Uh, because uh, we were, I was talking about this with some of the guys at the Slash show. This guy now sells shorts. This guy t- sells sells like a wrestling, like a, a, a karate gi, I like for the kids or something. Um, and he he gets that, you know. He comes out to Go Ninja Go from the Ninja Turtles. He has these like facsimile uh, facade Ninja Turtle looking T shirts and stuff. So I mean, he's definitely you know rolling off of that um but definitely it looks different and everything and this is what the kid has looked like forever I, I i know this guy from like back when i used to run the old juggalo site and the all the icp shows and stuff this guy other than being a little bit more colorful in his ring ring gear um has had the dreads for the you know maybe 10 years when i first ran into this kid um mm-hmm. and, and it's really cool that like he's turned that into his like he, he's able to turn this is him he you know very much so other than you know adding the, the karate element you know and everything on top of it um but and, and, and I know- I, i've only heard from you sorg but i and i definitely want to observe this when uh when doing the challenge for this week mm-hmm. but you've mentioned to me i know that about how he very much like a sammy guevara he's grown mm-hmm. as a wrestler and like in the sense of like picking his spots and and knowing definitely. when to you know definitely. when to do what he gets criticized a lot for being a flippy guy like flippy guy uh too many risks, wrong risks, uh, you know, uh, a botch monkey, you know, uh, like actually he's been hit on botch mania a couple of times. Um, <laughs> but, but like sometimes he does these ring rope walks, which are tremendous when he pulls it off, but they can turn into a bad taboo spot, you know, pretty easily. But, you know, and there was a lot of the early days, him trying to do that stuff where it just absolutely didn't work out, you know? Um, but he is, uh, he's, I think he's become very solid since, and, uh, uh, you know, he's still got plenty to work on, you know, obviously, but I think he's, he's, he's definitely come along as far as that goes, but we'll talk about that a bit with the challenge next week. Yeah. Uh, the challenge that you all can participate in, 
by going to youtube.com slash wrestling mayhem show watching the playlist and you're not limited to the playlist but it's just sort of a, a, a list of suggestions you found the casket uh, match <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, uh, there's a casket match uh, on there even with uh, one gory, so yeah. that should be very fun. Yeah, I filmed uh, that. I had I had the camera by the casket. That was interesting. Um, <laughs> that was the night the ring broke with Rhino and Bane. That was that was a fun night. Uh, with, oh, um, I'm sure. With Prime Wrestling, <laughs> <laughs> just holy crap. Um, yeah, but, you but can, the, the, uh, this you list. Send, I'm sorry. You this, can send- Go ahead. I was going to say you can send feedback uh, about the playlist, what you like, what you didn't like about Facade, mm-hmm. uh, by either tweeting us at Mayhem Show or by uh, sending us an email to goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com with the subject line indie uh, so we can uh, read them on the show and, and discuss and share feedback. So, um, yeah, that's the Indie Mayhem Challenge for this week. There you go. And this has been your Indie, indie <laughs> not your Indie Minute. Holy crap. Uh, oh, God. This, thank you very much for joining us. It was a great conversation. Thanks for having me, guys. All right. And go check him out. He's uh, apparently, he's supposed to be using his Twitters at Biss Says. <laughs> uh, and you can find him on Facebook as well. We'll see how that goes. Uh, maybe you can just, we'll just get everybody to bug you to use it more. And you'll get so many asks, you have to respond. <laughs> I think we have that kind of following here. Um, so go check that out. And of course, everything at inspireprowrestling.com. And you can check out this show and everything else at sorgatronmedia.com, wrestlingmayhemshow.com. We do this show around about 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 o'clock for you Central guys joining us. Hi. Um, over there, and there's links for the live chat and uh, stream and all that kind of stuff. And of course, we're on iTunes, we're on YouTube, uh, Spreaker, uh, all that kind of stuff. On High Heart Radio, even uh, if you have that app, you can follow us there. So, hello, High Heart Radio people listening to indie wrestling. Um, what a mix that's got to be. Uh, <laughs> you can check us out there and all that kind of stuff. And of course, the email address is good times at wrestling mayhem show.com um, or 412 206 WMS0 at mayhem show on the Twitters, Facebook, uh, Google+, Plus, all that kind of stuff. Just look up for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We all fly that banner around here. Uh, so uh, with that, make sure, get your indie wrestling in, support indie wrestling, buy people's t-shirts, buy their wrestling karate geese and shorts, shorts that they've tagged and all that crazy-ass stuff. We'll see you guys next week. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Oh. Sick, 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 you know how I act now